Hello basketball coaches and basketball players. My name is Alan from Al's Basketball Training and today I'm going to talk to you about substitutions in basketball. So I'm going to give you my thoughts and my expressions on how to run substitutions in basketball. It may be different than your approach, but it's always good to know other coaches' approaches to substitutions and whatever else it is, offense, defense, whatever. It's always good to have a mindset of how other coaches think. So... Because you, you just might just like the way I do it, and you might do it yourself. So, going down to it, personally, I make my assistant coach do it. <laughs> that way, that way, I don't have to deal with it. <laughs> I don't have to deal with all the, all the parents saying, You're not playing my kid, blah, blah, blah. I don't have to deal with it. It's fantastic. But, this is how I get my assistant coach to do it. Because, uh, I still like to have my own input. Because, well... I'm the head coach. So, going from there. First off, I like to say, hey, my starters, they need to be on the court anywhere from a half to two-thirds of the game. They can be more, and I will, let's say, if we're in a close game, I'm going to take over maybe the fourth quarter of substitutions just because, hey, I want my starters in the game. I want my best players that game to be in the game so that we can win. However, we can game plan out to see how other teams are doing their subs. Hey, they're taking their best player out at the, the three minute mark. So maybe we can take our best defender out at the three minute mark, let him get some rest and get another player in, things like that. So it's not going to be the exact same substitution model every single game. Some, t some coaches, of course, do the same substitutions every single game. That's totally up to them. However, myself, I like to game plan out. So, going from there, what I want to see is starters getting a half to one third, or sorry, two thirds of the game. Then the bench, they, the next five players are going to be getting basically the time that is left without the starters on, without the starters being on the court. And then the last two players, the 11th and 12th player, they're essentially there for development. I usually pick those players to be maybe a year younger than the rest of the team because then I can develop them even to become better players. And then that way, how I look at it is if those two players are going to be starters on the team that they're the age of, so the year younger, they might as well play a year up and be the, the bench players for my team. So they may or may not be there during each game. Those are the players I like to develop. So, how I like to run it with the coach that's younger than me is, hey, if you guys have a game, like these guys are on your team, these are your players, if they are currently in a game, or if you guys have a game, they're yours. But if you don't have a tournament that weekend, they're mine, they can play if they get to it. Now, some levels, they don't allow that. At the club level, they don't allow it. At the AAU level, they may allow it. It really comes down to how well you can do your administrations. And then, on top of that, for school, if you're coaching a school team, which I have one year, um, again, that is something that we did. And that's something that you're able to get away with quite easily at the school level, at least here in Canada. And then, so those two players don't generally get on the court unless it's a blowout. They usually practice with the team as well, which gets them even better. So going from there, the one thing I do not do ever, ever is five in, five out. I will never do that. And there's a reason for that. If you're taking five players off your bench saying, you're on, have fun, you are playing. Okay. There's one big thing that can happen there, and it's something that just, I don't know, maybe it's just something that happens to me, but there's one big thing that happens when you say five players on and five players off. And that one big thing is with those five players that are getting onto the court, they're going to be stiff. Especially when you get to the older age groups, 
they're going to be stiff. They're going to be cold. So because of that, I don't ever do five man rotations. I don't take five men out and five men on. I like to, the most I will do is have three players being put onto the court at the same time. I will not do any more than three. That way we still have two players with warm legs who can still run and don't take one or maybe even two possessions at max to get their legs under them again. That way you can minimize the other team from going on to a run. Because that's the worst. If you just made a substitution and they're cold and they made a turnover, they can't get back on defense, whatever it is, and the other team scores two, three times down the court, that's now a four, six, or even an eight or nine point possession. And, or not possession, but nine point swing. Even though we may have scored, that's still a nine point swing. And I don't like that. I don't like to have the other team come down in back to back to back times down the court and scoring. I always like to have my team out of every two possessions of the other team having the ball, I want them to have at least a minimum one missed shot out of two. Every other shot they have to miss. If they're making more than 50%, we got an issue. So, what I like to do is have one, two, or three men rotations switching out. That way we can keep warm legs on the court. Every single time I see a coach that says five in, five out, the only time I find that acceptable is if that coach, or myself if I'm coaching, is pissed off with the players who are on the court that say, you guys are not doing anything out there, you're all sitting, next five guys on. That's the only time I would find that acceptable is if you're pissed off at the players who are on the court and you just need to switch things up. Now, you have to remember those players that you just switched onto the court, they are going to be cold. They may miss a shot or two, and they may not be able to get back on defense as fast in the first possession or two. You have to keep that in mind. Now, going to having a kid on the team. I know there's a lot of coaches out there who coach because they get forced into it or because they just there's no other one around who wants to coach so they're like, "Hey, I'll coach. I'm in. Hi." And from there, if you're one of those coaches, you have to really watch your back. And what I mean by that is there's nothing worse than coaching a team, teaching them the skills, teaching them the teamwork, teaching them the life skills. And then having another parent attack you because, not physically, but word-wise, attack you because you're playing your kid more. That's why I like to, even though I don't have kids, I've, had, I've, tra- I've played, or not played, I've coached on teams that I've had players who I've trained. And it's the same exact thing that you get attacked for if you've got players on the team like let's say four or five players on the team that of players who you personally train one-on-one or in a group, those parents are thinking automatically that you're going to favor those kids. You may or you may not. It you, you might just because you know the way they play. However, you really have to watch those, those substitutions, and that's why I always like to let the assistant coach do the substitutions, give him my ideas. We would talk about it maybe a couple of hours before the game, at the very least 30 minutes before the game, and say, so this team really like that we're playing up against, this team really likes to run three-point shooters off the line. So what we need to do is have maybe some bigger guys on with our with our shooters so that those bigger guys can set some screens. We might run some screen and roll plays. And if their defenders run our shooter off the line, that just lets him roll towards the basket in a mismatch because now they've essentially switched so that now we can get an easy basket down low. So you have to have some mindset as to how the other team likes to play. 
So what I always like to do before I play against any team as a coach is to either go on YouTube, quite literally go on YouTube, type in that team, and you might be lucky to find a couple of games because sometimes coaches will put the games on YouTube for the parents and for the families of those players to see. Now you can use it as a scouting tool, but also if you're in a tournament, you can go and see the game. Usually it's before yours or maybe the next game uh, might, might have been two hours, three hours before your game. And now you can say, oh, number 32. He's a really good shooter. He's a fantastic shooter. So maybe we need to get uh, the guy who I picked from the soccer team to go and defend him. I personally like soccer players for defense because they're foot speed. But anyways, that's a totally another, other video. But I hope that this video has helped you understand or at least understand my mindset on substitutions. If it has, let me know in the comment section below. I would also love to know how you make your substitutions in your games. And also hit that like button and subscribe because that just makes the YouTube algorithm gremlins very happy for some reason. So I'll see you guys again later on today for the second video of the day.